Rockstar wants you to know that six is coming. Apple wants you to think that eight equals 16. And AMD wants you to think that you should, you should upgrade. You should get a new GPU. Hey, hey, hey. Stop being on that old crap. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. Spend money. Did you just interrupt my intro? I thought you were- We're awesome. gonna be going over the hottest things I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, November 9th, 2023. I was not pausing. It's not how the cadence works or nothing. What do you want to say? Don't, please. I was pausing at your keyboard. You were ruining <laughs> what I was trying to do, which was tell everybody that Rockstar has officially announced that the next generation of Grand Theft Auto is gonna be coming out sometime, someplace. They didn't actually say anything about that, but they did want to let everybody know after Bloomberg reported that Rockstar was gonna unveil the next gen GTA, that Rockstar then did it. They said, we are very excited to let you know that in early December, we will release the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of sharing these experiences with you all. Yeah, that turnaround gave me whiplash. What turnaround? I heard that it was being rumored that they were gonna announce that it was gonna come out at some point, like With last the trailer. night. Yeah. And then I came into work today and you were like, did you hear they announced it? <laughs> <laughs> in a tweet, it was like a tweet thread. And it was like the fourth tweet in that thread where it was like, yeah, we're gonna do that in December to celebrate Rockstar's 25th anniversary. You may remember that there were leaks with regards to GTA 6. It's likely gonna be set in Vice City with two different characters based on Bonnie and Clyde. It's supposed to be a whole fun time and Rockstar's taken over a decade to develop it. I hope it's like Watch Dogs. Bad? <laughs> but while Rockstar's confirming that, yeah, you're getting the next gen GTA, Nintendo's confirming that you're getting more live action movies from them. I don't know how to feel about this. Legend of Zelda. Don't worry, Chris Pratt's gonna voice Link. It's gonna be great. Hey, I'm Link. <laughs> What's going on? From Brooklyn. I'm just kidding. That's not the voice. Yeah, that's also not what they're going to do because they're likely going to revive somebody from the dead to play Link. That's probably part of their plans <laughs> after the strikes that are going on between Hollywood and SAG AFTRA, which is the union that represents the actors that are working in Hollywood. And turns out that the last and best final offer from Hollywood represented the fact that they wanted to, without consent, they wanted to scan everybody who makes over a certain wage, so all of the high profile actors, and then have their scans in their assets of that person in a database that they could then use their likeness without permission forever, whether they're alive or dead. So the actors all went, wow, we could not get paid for being no, that who was we their, are? That was their final offer. If not, then the Hollywood just there's no more entertainment <laughs> industry. We all get to be bored on watch YouTube and all of that. Obviously, SAG after it rejected this saying, that's no. ridiculous. <laughs> Especially the part where like, even after an actor passes, you still have the rights to use them like in the, perpetuity forever. Yeah, their estate has no say in it. Like they, they just want to just have your face forever. <laughs> well, that's what you signed for when you joined UFD Tech. I didn't sign nothing. You did, you did. And you weren't under duress, I'll tell you that. Well, Hollywood probably wants to be a Aware of AI because it's rolling out literally everywhere. I'm gonna tell you about a few new places that AI is rolling out. Google search. Great. You thought it was already out, but turns out it's a wide release to over 120 countries being tested in the US and a few other territories. And now it's been rolled out everywhere. But then also Mozilla is coming out with their first large language model from FakeSpot. It's gonna be an AI chatbot to help you research buying things. Thanks Mozilla. And then Samsung's making their own. It's called Gauss or Goose. How are you supposed to pronounce that? Goose. <laughs> Thank you for that. And likely it's gonna be rolled out as their next generation AI assistant in the S24 series. That's gonna be unveiled probably in February or March of next year. And it's gonna replace Bixby, which as we all know, Samsung's really good at this stuff. Bixby became a staple. Ty is an operating system. When it, whenever Samsung does something themselves, I get on board with it. I'm a Bixby hater. How dare you in this <laughs> household? Well, just like people always summon Bixby to answer their life's deepest questions, I summon Reese to give me life's greatest deals. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, looks like the Black Friday deals are already starting because we got the Sony PlayStation 5 DualSense wireless controller going for only $49.99, making it $20 off for every single colorway available, which take your pick. I think the Midnight Black looks the best. And then next up, we have a SteelSeries Arctis 9 wireless gaming headset going for only $99.99, making it $100 off, half off for one of my favorite headsets out there. And then lastly, if you want to make the ultimate combo, you can pick up the Sony PlayStation 
5 consoles, specifically the Marvel Spider-Man 2 bundle. For only $4.99.99, keep in mind that this is the normal white variant, not the one with the cool Spider-Man side plates, but it does come with Marvel Spider-Man 2, which honestly is one of the best games of the season. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. I've got a bad deal for you. You want 16, but you get eight. That's what Apple's trying to do, make you think that their amount of eight gigabytes of RAM on their base model M3 Max is good enough, especially when you're spending $1,600. That's how much it starts yeah. at. You wanna pay $200 per gigabyte. Well, you're getting more than just the RAM. Mm -mm. Oh, okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, with the upgrade prices, it does kind of look like that sometimes, but Apple's saying comparing our memory, our memory, comparing our memory to other systems' memory, actually isn't equivalent because of the fact that we have such an efficient use of memory and we use memory compression and we have a unified memory architecture. Actually, eight gigabytes on an M3 MacBook Pro is probably analogous to 16 gigabytes on other systems. Probably. I need, I need to put my pinky up for this. We just happen to be able to use it much more efficiently. And so what I would say is I would have people come in and try what they want to do on their systems and they will, I think, see incredible performance. I'm getting oh, into like- You got into Trumpy there for a second. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> If you look at the raw data, <laughs> and if you look at the raw capabilities of these systems, it really is phenomenal. And this is the place where I think people need to see beyond the specs and actually go and look beyond the capabilities and listen to trusted people like you who have actually used the system. Who said this? This was somebody from Apple. This is the most nonsensical thing I've ever heard. It come is out their pre Apple. vice president <laughs> of worldwide product marketing. They just said nothing for like three paragraphs. <laughs> so on the one hand, I will agree with them. Apple's use of memory on macOS is way more efficient than it is on Windows. It is actually really good. If you're editing on a Windows laptop that has 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's gonna be equivalent to the eight gigabytes of RAM that's on Apple. So like there is a good performance equivalency. I don't care when it costs 1600. <laughs> you're getting close to the same performance, but there's a huge hiccup here that they don't address that has been shown to be a problem. <laughs> Thank you for the huge checkout since the M1 chips. And that is when you run out of RAM, you start doing swaps to the hard drive, to the SSD. So it's actually very easy to run out of eight gigabytes. And so yes, the SSD on the MacBooks might be fast enough so that you don't notice that it's actually doing that. But what you're doing is reducing the life of your solid state drive on your MacBook every time you run out of RAM. And guess what? You can no longer replace the SSD on MacBooks. So while it might be fast enough, the problem is you actually are wearing out other parts of the system. Uh, no, but these are actually very uh, efficient Mac SSDs that won't wear out. No, they and do. They <laughs> and you can check it and you look at it. And like, there was also the problem like with the base M2 chips where they went from using two 128 gigabyte drives in RAID to a single 256 gig drive, and that slowed down the performance from M1 to M2 because they used different memory chips. Create a whole issue. Apple just keeps doing things like this. They do whatever they want. Like, give you gaming. Do you know it's a gaming? Thing it's, now? it's for gamers. It's Resident, the gamer platform now. Absolutely. Resident Evil 4, which is a game, really good game from what I hear, is going to be coming to the Apple platform on December 20th. iPhone 15 Pro to Mac and to iPad. You can play it on all of those. I know that it's a remake, but I do think it's funny that they're getting a very old game. It is new <laughs> It's a big deal. No, it is It is kind of a big deal, but you want a newer game than that? Stray, December 5th, coming to Mac OS. Oh, the cat game. You can play as a cat. <laughs> it's going to be so meow. I don't know what that was. You bring out the worst. So me. meow? Oh no. You can play it right meow. That's the better. But you can't. It's you in a can. month. In a month, you'll play it right meow. Well, you know what people are saying about GM's self-driving tech, the cruise stuff? That's meow, you just hit me. It's like, ow, it got hurt. Because they're hitting people. Oh yeah. So they're dangerous. They are. So they recalled over a thousand of their robo taxis because of one incident that they had where they hit a pedestrian and then drug that pedestrian for 20 feet before stopping, which led to the federal investigators coming out and being like, hey, why did that happen? And it turns out that the cruise platform actually has a whole lot of data that it's just like, I don't care. So it actually was found out that the algorithm has trouble identifying children and that it does not show caution when children are 
are around. It thinks it's something else. So they might not slow down. They might not also swerve around it. And in some of their tests, it would still hit them at 28 miles an hour because it didn't recognize that it was a hazard. Would it hit children? It would hit children at 28 miles an hour, which is enough to probably kill them. That's enough to kill me. Yeah. If you hit your head after that, that's a... That's, that, that, that's is, a that is actually really <laughs> terrible. It turns out cars without drivers don't do things right. Who'd have thunk? Not Elon, I'll tell you that. But one of Elon's biggest competitors is actually finally seeing success. Rivian reporting in their Q3 earnings report that they are no longer beholden to just Amazon. They can make their delivery platform for whoever wants it. The exclusivity is over. They still have to fulfill their contract, which is 100,000 vehicles within the next few years. They've already done 10,000 of those, but they can now sell their EDV to a whole bunch of different companies, which is good. So we might start seeing more of these out on the road. Can I buy one for personal use? I don't, there's probably like a minimum order quantity so you might be able to. Do you have enough money to buy like a thousand of them? A thousand? No. <laughs> but also in this earnings report, Rivian announcing that they are beating their production goals. They are making a lot more money than they used to. Their costs are lowering and it looks like they actually might become profitable at some point, which I'm looking forward to. Rivian is the one other like EV company that I really think can make it right now. Everybody else is in the stages of like startup might fail because of lack of cash flow type deals. Whereas Rivian has its feet in the industry, provided stuff to Amazon is doing things the right way. And I think I think we'll see something good from them soon. I do worry that by the time we see a relatively affordable vehicle from them, all of the other major manufacturers will already have decent EVs to compete with them. Potentially, but one of the big things with EV production isn't the fact that they announce good ones or that they show off prototypes. It's actually the battery development. So like mm. Ford, can't make enough EVs for the next five years because they didn't source enough of the battery components that they needed. So Rivian's getting in now on sourcing all of the battery stuff. That was Tesla's biggest competitive advantage, not making the car, but making the battery platform. And so I think it's got a good future, even if everybody keeps announcing good cars, mm -hmm. you know, they, they might not actually be able to make enough. To it gets exhausting. The, the car announcements, I don't believe them anymore because you just don't see them for another like while. Yes, I was actually really surprised when the Ionic 6 came out as quickly as it did. Yeah, that seeing those the on the road is weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting on the EV9 and the ID Buzz. I want the ID Buzz. I'm like not believing that that's actually going to come out because it looks so it's weird. It's supposed and to launch in Europe, like towards the end of this year, like the 2024 model is supposed to happen, and then the end of next year is when we're supposed to get here in the U.S. Road trip. But the beginning of next year is when we're supposed to get the new APUs from AMD, and it turns out that they're called the 8000 series because mm. they're going to be launched in 2024. Imagine that. So we're also expected to get four different versions. 8300G, 8500G, 8600G, and 8700G, all based on different things. Oh, wow, they go up. They do. The but number increases. One of the important things to note is that some of these lower chips, like the 85 and 8300G, are actually based on Zen 4 and Zen 4C cores. So they have the compact units as well as the big fat units, with the 8300G only having one fully-fledged core and three Zen 4C cores. The 8500G will have two big cores and four little cores. The 8600 G will have six fat cores and the 8700 G will have eight super ultra mega cores, whatever we call it, the, the, the regular ones. And it'll also have 12 compute units of RDNA 3, which hopefully will mean that it is as good as all of the APUs we've been seeing in mobile, but better because you have a higher TDP. It just seems like a lot of them. Lot I like it. Four, four is good. I like that. Do you know how long it's been since we got an APU? <laughs> Not since you've worked here. I love APUs. You, you haven't gotten to see that. I buy them as soon as I can. Ooh. I like go on to eBay and buy them from Hong Kong before they're available in the US. <laughs> that is how much I love APUs. But Kyler, I did warn you and I warned everybody else, you should have been preparing for this because the end is finally here. AMD has finally announced the end of support for Polaris and Vega GPUs. No! The RX 480, 580, and Vega 56, 64, most importantly, Radeon 7 will now no longer get ongoing driver support. It's over. And they will only get critical updates moving forward. Do, wait, but does this include APUs that have Vega graphics oh, yeah. integrated? Yeah, of course. Oh, that hurts, actually. <laughs> that actually does hurt. So AMD said, the AMD and Polaris and Vega graphics architecture are mature, stable, and performant, and don't benefit as much from regular software tuning. Going forward, AMD is providing critical updates for Polaris and Vega-based products via a separate driver package, including important security 
and functionality updates as available. The committed support is greater than for products AMD categorizes as legacy, and gamers can still enjoy their favorite games on Polaris and Vega-based products. So they are saying this isn't sunsetted yet. This isn't legacy where we just like yeah. kill them all together because they can't. Too many people are still on them, but it does mean that it's going to get less of a priority. You're going to see longer and longer in between the updates that are actually happening. But not to be outdone, AMD announcing that they're sunsetting the ongoing driver support. NVIDIA tweeted out, hey, we've got game ready driver support for GPUs going back to 2014. Don't worry. You've got nine years. You got the you got the Maxwell GPUs. Don't worry. You, you scroll on down. Look at that 750 Ti, 750 and 745 still supported by NVIDIA right now. And the, aren't they going to stop that like very soon, though? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late to dunk on AMD. OK, <laughs> that's, that's the idea. So if you are on 480, 580, 590, just start planning the upgrade. I've said that you should not be surprised by this if you watch hot news. We've been kind of calling this out for the last six months that this day was marching on forward. It is now here. It's not the worst that it could be, but I wouldn't be surprised if in less than six months we have AMD say, okay, now we're actually stopping all driver support. Like this is a legacy product now. You know how you circumvent this? You never- Go around the globe. You never update your drivers. That Ever. way they can't take it away from you. <laughs> right, that's how that works. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's like when you have a PlayStation that you want to hack into Linux with, you mm -hmm. can't update the firmware. Yep, 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 yep. I get yep. it. Well, it's time to jump on into comment response about yesterday's episode of Hot News, which before we do that, Kyler, you know how you said that you thought that I ruined this mouse pad forever with cheats of John? Uh, yeah, vaguely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it stays there. <laughs> It's not even attached to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're not spritzing him properly. I'm just, I'm gonna wipe it all off and just have a ceramic <laughs> cheese and John here. Vabello saying, haven't diesel locomotives always just been a giant diesel generator powering an electric drivetrain? If it's efficient for pulling that much weight with the train, I think it makes sense for a truck also. But then the response to that from Bowener just saying, you are correct. By using the IC engine as a generator, it can run at near constant speed. And the electric drivetrain is higher efficiency because the torque on an electric motor is highest at lower RPM, which is pretty much ideal on a regular IC wow. engine. So this was one of the things that I didn't consider with making the Ram charger really efficient. The engine mm -hmm. doesn't have to ramp up and ramp down. It can just run Instantly, at a steady, yeah. yeah, at a steady state to constantly be refilling that battery, and you're not dealing with the demands of stop and go traffic. That's all being handled by the electric motors, which are more efficient at lower RPMs. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we got Neo Wolf saying, in the not so distant future, Nvidia launches the RTX 8070 Ti Mega Ultra Delta Hyper Go Go. It's morphin time supercar to mixed enthusiasm and sprain. Dunks. Oh, I would love it if the year that comes out, we get a random like Power Rangers video game and they make a Power Rangers themed one for the It's Morphin Time super card combo that comes with a, a key for Power Rangers Morphin Time Epic Go Go Indie Fund Patreon. <laughs> okay, well, Pedro said as a response, which I also thought was funny, it has the same performance as the <laughs> RTX 7070 Ti, but it has DLSS 7.0 this time, so it's a crazy new product. Let's go, guys. It's like the those, um, there were those TikToks a couple years ago that were like, I have a 1660 Super, which is basically this. And it has the same BIOS as this. And then it, it's built on the same, the, the, the. So I basically have a 3060. And I can't remember the chain of events. That sounds like your average tech talker. Sellout artist saying, Kyler trying to explain why the kerning and stroke weight were such a hot mess on the 4070 Ti Super spoke to my soul. As someone who has to make that speech at least twice a week to boomers in marketing. That's who made it. I think it's boomer. I think it's boomers do in you, marketing. Do you think Nvidia is suffering from the same thing that the US political system is, which is Success. just its top heavy <laughs> in terms of age? AJ Abraham <laughs> saying, the black Noctua coolers look great. I brought some Chromax fans in the past. Great products, but expensive, but not recognized recognizable as Noctua. That must be why they stick to those horrible colors for most products. No, it's because it makes it go faster. I think it's like Gucci, where it looks bad on purpose, and then you're paying extra for it to look bad. But then that makes it cool, so then it looks good. Mm -hmm. CC12YT saying, that super looks like if someone highlighted that word with their cursor and then focused on another window. Yes, it looks bad. <laughs> the game bench saying, honestly, I feel like automakers have been trying to move over to EVs too quickly, and this was the smarter move. More hybrids in a slower transition to full on EVs. This seems like an evolution of EVs to me. Like this just seems like a good idea. It's just a hybrid. It's a nice, it's a nice hybrid. And I think that's what most of America needs right now. Yeah, it's like a hybrid, but the opposite. 
Andy's saying, I feel you, Kyler. He already knows. Hey. Somehow it looks more plain than the previous. Maybe because there are no more diagonal lines. Also large, but thin numbers kind of look weird to me. It's, they're doing the minimalism thing that all the companies are doing, where they take something that looks nice and they make it not nice. Okay, well, I'm going to minimize this episode of Hot News. That's the minimize. That's the... That's what... In the future... You'll get it when you're older. In the future, they'll go, you hit the minimize, and it goes, we'll make that noise. See you tomorrow. I'm just curious how long you're gonna <laughs> go on for.